keeping the data in the bean synchronized with the data in the database is actually one of the principal jobs of an entity bean. If the problem didn't exist, that is, if there is never more than one person using the database at any one time, you could simply use a stateless bean to do the reading and writing, but it's never that simple. Now, here's a rough idea of how the container bean takes care of this situation. A client program calls a method of the bean. Now, this method is going to update some information in the database, but the message doesn't go directly to the bean. It gets only as far as to the container of the bean. The container communicates with the database to lock any rows that may be affected by the action that is to be taken. At this point, the entity bean for the data is loaded into memory. The bean is loaded into memory and the data is loaded into the bean from the database. We now have the bean and the database synchronized with the same data and the lock on the database guarantees that nothing is going to change while the bean is working. Now the transaction begins. This is the same sort of thing we looked at earlier. There can be a number of things done. A number of different methods can be called in and by the bean, and the data in the database will not change while this is happening. The bean can do database updates, and the container keeps track of it all and keeps a check on it. If the bean is unable to finish and the transaction needs to be rolled back, it's simply a matter of removing the locks from the database and everything goes back to the way it originally was set. If the transaction completes successfully, the container updates the database and ends the transaction. The data from the bean has been written to the database and the bean has completely finished its work. As a final step, the lock is released on the database. When an entity bean is finished with its job, it doesn't go out of existence the way session beans do. Its instance is stored in a bean cache and could be used again. The next time an entity bean of this type is needed, it's pulled out of the cache and loaded with the appropriate data. This means that the same entity bean may represent one set of data one time and another set of data the next time. I just described a series of actions taken by a bean with container managed persistence. An entity bean with bean managed persistence will do much the same thing, but the container is simply not involved. The code to do all of it will be in the bean because it's not in the container. Now every server with a container does things in a slightly different way so you'll need to take a close look at the one you're using and make sure you understand what it does and whether there is anything you need to do to make it work. If you're going to write a bean that does its own database access you can do that by writing JDBC code and using SQL just the way we presented it earlier. You can do this with an entity bean, or you can do this with a session bean with JDBC inside it. Or if you prefer, you could use a web service, which I'll be describing in the next group of lessons.